bad guy, don't so come say hi to the bad guy, don't so come say hi to the bad guy, don't so come say hi to the bad guy. Don't. Say hello to the bad guy. Tax season. Our people are very misinformed or uninformed. Or, or just I, I, maybe that's not even a word. Not informed at all mm-hmm. um, about what's really going on and how it affects the the, the drug culture in prison. And you have dudes. I, I call it the um, Rikers Bar Association. Next to the federal government, the Rikers Bar Association has the best conviction rate ever because dudes get locked up mm-hmm. and they get in this environment of being locked up and confined and being a, a part of of mass incarceration and the intellect that flows through and the information gathering is, is zero next to none. So their decision you get, you got dudes who because of circumstances, they don't know what a good decision looks like. And then they get into that mass incarceration street culture space. And they, they, they're almost caricatures of themselves. Like they get so far from who they really are that trying to counsel them, it's a very difficult job. It's not easy. Now, the white attorney who doesn't really give a shit, who just wants money, it's very easy for him because he's going to charge you. You're going to pay. He's going to tell you what you should do or shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. And because you don't really believe in yourself, you're going to nod your head. Someone like myself who you is 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 not any client out here who's going to tell me about the street. So when I come along and I'm going to tell him what the law is, I'm going to educate him on that. I'm going to educate his family and I'm going to, you know, tell him what his options are. He's not used to that. I I might as well be E.T. out this motherfucker. (laughs) Seriously. No, I already know because, (laughs) you you know, I remember sometimes like a dude to come back and tell me shit that they lawyer said. And I would just put my head down because, you know. What happened, you know, what happened with me is that I always was a self-education person. Like, if I don't know what it was, I'm like, I'm going to go find out what out. this shit is about. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I started getting in trouble, like, the first couple of times that I ever got locked up, I was like, wait up, this is some shit. I don't even know what the fuck they talking about in court. I don't like the numbers she just said. I want to know what she meant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. so I just started self-educating myself on the street to back inside. Whenever I got locked up, I was educating myself while I was on the street. And I started like, and it was sad because I was like, yo, you become such a great criminal once you start understanding the law. Oh, yeah, listen, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not one of these preachy people who... You know, you born in certain circumstances and, and, and capitalism is the name of the day in class. You're going to do whatever you need to do mm-hmm. to survive and whatever that may be. And it's a book, uh, The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. He talks about the phenomenon of taking a group of people who have been dis- disenfranchised and beaten up by the world and the big world. And then that world sends them to the smallest location that they can fit all of them in and gives them the least amount of resources, their nerves, nervous system is going to be not to have it. And the people that they not have it against it's is going to be each other. Mm-hmm. And that's been our history here because of what, you know, de facto segregation, a bunch of different things. And it's funny, you know, people always like choices. There are always choices. There is a difference between an autonomous choice and a totally free choice mm-hmm. and just a choice. And unfortunately, you know, we we always looking for that leader because we had such great leaders who've been fighting in the past. But what we need to start doing is ideological things. We need ideology. We don't believe in ideology. Mm-hmm. We believe in martyrs. We need a martyr. We need a leader. But we don't really believe that because in the back of our mind, we think if we get this leader, oh, he's just going to get killed like the other guy did. Or they're going to, you know, they're going to, you know, he's going to get caused or yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever. If our ideology, because the thing is, the oppressor and the things that we're fighting, they have money, but it's not really their money that's driving this thing. It's their ideology. It's how they think. It's yeah. their principles. And we have left that. And, we, and until we get that back, it's going to be a revolving door. And it's an ill revolving door right now. Like we and I hate to sound like because, you know, we always seem like we at that moment of of the end. You know, it's almost the end. But it's pretty bad right now. Yeah, it's bad. Like dudes are not, you know, dudes are doing things um, 
and it's totally affecting it. You got cats who getting jammed up. You got dudes 19 years old already predicate felons. Yeah. 19. That's a fact. But that you know, I was thinking about that also, you know what I mean? Because I've I've done I've been locked up as an adolescent, you know what I mean? I've been locked up as an adult and I've seen kids come in as adolescents that really wasn't like me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And when I say like me, you know what I mean? At the time, I was like, I was real aggressive and real, you know what I mean? And I could tell these dudes wasn't really like that. They just was outside my, got, caught, got caught, caught up in trouble. But what happens is this, because they so broke and they can't get out of jail, they have to succumb to whatever's going on. And then they start becoming yeah. more and more dumb. Yes. <laughs> dumb. Real talk. More and more dumb. Absolutely. And then... More and more aggressive. Yes. Because that's what happens. You start losing intellect. You get dumb and dumber. And then you start becoming aggressive because that's the only way you know how to express yourself. You know what I mean? And, and think about that guy in an environment where, you know, all these dudes, you know, you just go go scroll through the gram and catch timeline, right? So you live in a surveillance state. There's sky boxes. There's dirty boxes where the government, you know, the federal government is very powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, the state government is very powerful, but the federal government, you know, the perfect example, I'm, I'm on the federal CJA panel, Eastern District. I also represent people charged with capital punishment at times. Sometimes you when you go into state court is what is it? The people of the United, people of people New York versus, versus Tax Stone, Ken Montgomery. Mm-hmm. You go over here to federal land. <laughs> it's the United the States of America versus such and such. Yep. And the surveillance in these Title Three cases and in these cases where, first of all, the government only knows what's going on because in our community, people tell. That's just a part of law enforcement. Can you say that one more time? People people tell. Why do the, why do police know what's going on? Because everyone <laughs> is telling. Because everyone is telling. Is they're telling. Te- they're telling on themselves because they we live in this narcissistic society where you want to get on the gram and although you a swiper mm-hmm. and you get free money and you bounce around the country and you get these pieces, mm. you decide I'm going to go to the hottest restaurants, I'm going to rent the nicest stuff, and I'm going to gram it. I'm going to do it for the gram. I'm going to go on Facebook. Have you seen Instagram affect people's cases? All the time. <laughs> Yo, like, absolutely all the time. But you'll talk to cats. Nah, la, 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 nah, son. You know, I'm good. Nah, nah, nah. I deleted that. You deleted what? Can't delete nothing. There's a probable, post on the there's a probable cause application search warrant that's getting face, Facebook, Zuckerberg, he has you giving all your personal information because he's selling it. Yeah. And the government is getting it. So the, all those deleted Facebook comments from five years ago, they got them. Mm-hmm. Nah, but then dudes get even crazier. Nah, nah, that's not what I meant, son. I might have meant la la la. All right, you know what you meant? Okay, you speaking in code right here, right? Crow, bro, blood, you doing you speaking mm-hmm. in code? All right, this is what the government is doing. They're taking that sheet, they're compiling it, and then they're giving it to this paralegal over here who and this FBI agent, and they're going to sit down with the informant who is one of you. Yeah. He blood, he cuz. And he's going to explain gonna all explain of this. explain that and tell them what it is. And then they're going to come up with a flow sheet and chart, and then they're going to give it to all of their assistants who grew up in Westchester and Rockland and wherever the uh, the, sh- the 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 nice side of Chicago and they're gonna know your codes too. Mm-hmm. So we're t- like we have, you know, they're there. So if you notice, there's a trend going on. You don't really hear about the mob getting locked up, right? Yeah, I haven't. There was I, one. I said this there shit. was a recent case uh, last yeah, that, week. That's old. That's that old guy old from case. Lufthansa. Yeah. <laughs> but think about that. This is the cultural effect of where we're at, and we don't want to accept it. Mm-hmm. Being a mobster, an Italian mobster in America, is sort of romantic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like glorified. He, he's going to get the benefit of white privilege and reasonable doubt. Those guys noticed something. They said, whoa, the government, we can't fight these guys like that. We got to get low and get money. You know what? No killing. But let's get money because they're not on us. Mm-hmm. There's no profile for us. And that's what they did. And you know what America did? 
because you always have to, if you're any po uh, politician, Republican or Democrat, you have to say you're tough on crime. What scares the bejesus out of everybody, even bougie black people, black guys, Hispanic guys who do crime? And wow, you got these gangs out here. You got these rappers and singers who blood and crip. Mm -hmm. They blooding and crip. Oh, this gang stuff is serious, honey. Wow. So you pull in these gang. You you see what you're starting to see is all these gang federal gang takedowns and special narcotic takedowns of black Hispanic gang bangers because that when you look in the paper. That scares everybody. Mm -hmm. And dudes don't even have any money, a lot of these guys. That's the sad shit, that these dudes is catching the same charges that yeah, got he caught yes. and don't have don't not have a any, cent. But, but this, is what they, this is where they're worse at. And this is another fact. I want people to research how many times the federal death penalty statute has been sought by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Southern or Eastern and see how many times they sought it against some black guys and Hispanic guys and how many times they sought it against an Italian mobster who's killed hundreds. And what happens is the, the young black and Hispanic guys, they are funneled through this system. A lot of them have been dumbed down, like you said, they don't know what's going on. They have no family. There is no bell paid. There is no El Chapo dreams. Mm -hmm. And these guys get in the federal system and they are in Alice in Wonderland. And they don't even understand the serious. Yo, listen, the federal government, they'll bring you up. And anyone who's been in federal custody, when you come out, your, your holding cell is right next to the judge's courtroom. They'll bug the holding cell and bring up one of your homies and y'all get to talking. <laughs> And then you go to trial in the next year and then they have the wiretap for what you was talking about. So anyone like for me, I, I've had guys, you know, when you go to Rikers and you, you, you can, I'm sure you can testify to this. When you jump on the phone, this phone call is recorded. That's a fact. And they say it. And, you know, motherfuckers act like they don't hear that. They shit. don't hear it. 